Well, let's see if I still remember how to do this. It's been <laughs> quite a hot minute since we've last seen each other. Hi, hello. It's been about two weeks, maybe even a bit more than two weeks since I last posted a video here. I did give a fair warning though that I might not have time to film in between and in retrospect I should probably just have known better instead of making promises that I knew I cannot keep. So um, I was in Denmark for a work trip and then uh, the weekend after my parents came over they just literally left uh, yesterday so I didn't really have like a single minute to even think about YouTube. Anyway, I'm going to start uh, slowly doing my makeup but the idea of today's video is that we're just going to catch up a little bit and also I will show you a couple of new products um, <clears throat> that I have obtained, not too many in the meantime. I'm going to start by applying my Inglot eyeshadow primer. So I just wanted to like give a little quick update on eyeshadow primer. Now since we are on the topic of eyeshadow primer, I just quickly wanted to mention nothing is wrong with the Urban Decay primer potion. So I found that out, you know, too little too late if I'm being honest because I already bought a backup of the Inglot eyeshadow primer because this one's actually almost finished or at least whatever I can squeeze out is almost finished. I am going to cut the tube on the short term so that I can get whatever is in there but my eyeshadow has started creasing with the Urban Decay primer potion and I was a little afraid that that primer just doesn't work for me. However, in the meantime, as you might have found out because I talked about it in one of my previous videos, I found out that the problem isn't the primer, the problem was my glitter base. I had been using a bit more consistently the uh, stick thing, the Intensify stick from Pat McGrath. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a sore throat. So I've been using the um, Pat McGrath Intensify stick a little bit more consistently because I've been trying to finish it and I found out that unfortunately, especially with certain formulas, that thing makes my eyeshadow crease. It is just a much more emollient, waxy kind of texture and it does not mesh well with people who have oily eyelids. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of Auric Glow Lust to highlight underneath my eyes. So I don't really uh, think that that's a problem that everyone faces. I've seen plenty of people who love their Intensifies stick. I personally will rely on that uh, as I have so far, just like for lower lash line. Uh, longevity and especially my eyeshadows crease quite badly when they're in the Quint formula from Pat McGrath. I recall using this primer with the baked uh, formulas like, like the Astral VR and that sort of thing and I don't remember having such issues with it so I do really think that it's a combination of very emollient already crease prone eyeshadows together with that stick that makes a really bad combination if you have oily lids. So that's something to keep in mind. For my foundation I'm going to take the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. So this is the original one in the shade 2 and 1, which is my normal shade that I usually wear throughout the year. Uh, I was wearing the shade 3 and 1 throughout most of the summer, but now I think I'm slowly getting back to my regular complexion shade and I think this um, color fits me quite nicely. And I have really fallen in love with this foundation because it is just the most long-wearing foundation that I have ever tried. So just to circle back and complete the topic of the eyeshadow primers, nothing is wrong with the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It performs quite well, just as well um, as my Inglot Eyeshadow Keeper. It's just that it wasn't really matching well with the intensified stick from Pat McGrath. So in case you were wondering, and um, if you've been around my channel you will know this, but the NYX glitter glue is my favorite glitter glue of choice. And I will continue to stick with that. For concealer I'm also going back to my normal shade. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct in the shade 1N. So the new products that we're going to talk about. First we're going to talk about Finally, those freaking oversized highlighters from Chanel that I've been waiting for since the end of August, ever since I first laid eyes on them when they were teased over the summer. And then there were rumors being spread around later on that they will not at all be available in Europe and the US, which honestly seems a bit counterintuitive, but since I didn't really have a lot of um, experience with limited editions, from Chanel. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but um, already at the time Charlotte Holtcroft sort of reassured me that they're probably going to come. 
and they did eventually come and the stupid thing is that they had been out for a while on the website before I realized that they had been released I think for about at least a week because I stalked the Chanel website I stalked the Chanel website on a relatively regular basis to make sure that I don't miss them because I had a very specific idea about which um, embossing I wanted to have and the only thing I changed my mind about was the color but anyway so uh, Chanel has a really stupid website, let me tell you. The thing is, when uh, they release their new limited edition collections, sometimes they will end up under, you know, their makeup and then collections, and other times they will not be anywhere, you know, announced on the website for you to know. So the Les Symboles collection, the one that includes these oversized highlighters, never announced on their website. I coincidentally found them when I searched under highlighters and I had done that before and the only thing I came across was their, you know, regular line highlighter. And then all of a sudden, there they were, all of the shades, all of the embossings, everything that your little heart could, you know, desire to choose from was there on the website, finally. But it was really stupid that, you know, some of the collections are there some of the collections are not and they're not very intuitive. I find their website really stupid, I'll be honest with you. To set the foundation, I'm going to take the Dior Backstage Powder in the shade 2N. As you can see, I'm making some really significant progress in panning this powder and I'm really hoping that by the end of the year it will have more or less finished. It's a really good powder, I really enjoy it. But at some point you reach a stage where you just want, you know, something to be gone so that you can focus on something else and potentially try something different. Although with the amount of powder that I still have, I don't think I'll be trying anything different until 21, 22. Let's quickly do brows. I'm going to take the Too Faced uh, Fluff and Brow Wax thing. So the reason I found out about the highlighters uh, was not because I was randomly stalking the website and all of a sudden decided to check under highlighters, but because about two weeks ago, Charlotte Holdcroft um, posted on Instagram that she had bought one of these highlighters and then she immediately uh, did a video on the shade Precious Coral and I was like, wait, if they're in the UK, they must be in Europe as well. So then I went to check on their highlighters and I found it. And I was originally planning on purchasing the shade uh, Warm Gold because that just seemed like the most logical choice for someone of my skin tone. I know a lot of people were really upset with the shade Pearly White because it is a little bit more on the glittery side. Trust me, if I could, I would swap places with you because I really don't care if a highlighter is glittery. Uh, but for me, that shade just would look super ashy and it would be too cool toned. So there was no way in hell I was getting Pearly White. And the thing is, I've been seeing the shade Pearly White and uh, warm golden on Vinted for a while already because I think something was wrong with swapping the box versus what was inside the box and a lot of people who had bought pearly white got wa warm golden or something and they were selling them on Vinted. The only thing that was wrong about all of these were the embossings. Uh, I could find the little like tweed pattern, the lion pattern, but I had my heart set on the camellia pattern. So that brings us to another interesting part of the story and why I changed my mind about the shade that I bought eventually. So literally a few days prior to uh, Charlotte releasing the video, I sort of accidentally, because I've been checking Vinted for a while to see if I can find what, the shade that I want, uh, I stumbled across someone who was selling their Rav de Camellia, so the limited edition highlighter from two years ago, which also comes with the beautiful Camellia embossing on it, completely brand new for a really reasonable price. And I was like, fuck it, I'm tired of waiting on these oversized highlighters, they're probably never going to come, and I'm going to satisfy the urge because also Charlotte never really shuts up about that highlighter, she says it's the most beautiful thing ever, so I was like, you know, okay, then I'm just going to buy the Rav de Camellia. So I did buy the Rav de Camellia. Uh, let me grab a bronzer. I am going to take the um, Victoria Beckham Bronzing Brick in the shade 2 and I'm going to sort of like mix the two shades together. So then I had already ordered the Rav de Camellia and I thought, reasonably speaking, that I had satisfied the urge to own a Chanel limited edition highlighter with the Camellia embossing. 
apparently I had not because I still went ahead and purchased one of the oversized highlighters, as I said. Um, and I decided to go for the shade Precious Coral because, first of all, it didn't seem at all like it was too dark for Charlotte. And Charlotte is the deeper skin tone than I am. But it really didn't seem like it would be a shade that absolutely wouldn't work for me. There was like a teeny tiny chance that I might have chosen wrong. But I was fairly certain that I can probably make this highlighter work. And also, just based on her videos and, you know, maybe my wrong impression, I thought Rev the Camellia would be like a warm... well, not warm, but like a golden champagne kind of shade. Which is why I decided to forego warm, go like warm golden, the shade from the new range, the oversized ones, and I chose Precious Coral, because between Pearly White and Precious Coral, obviously per Precious Coral was the safer choice for me. However, as it turns out, Rev the Camellia is not at all uh, golden. It is really more of like a pink champagne, like a very, very light pink champagne, maybe with a hint of gold to it. But honestly, on my skin, Rev the Camellia translates relatively cool tone. So that is all to say that in the end, I could have just gotten warm golden, but there was no way of me knowing because the two highlighters basically arrived within one day of each other. The Rev the Camellia shade arrived uh, on the day that I returned from Denmark, so I made my husband go and um, drive me to the pickup point to get the highlighter. So on the day that I arrived, uh, the first thing that I did was go and get my Rev the Camellia highlighter. And I think literally the day after or something, the um, new one from the oversized collection arrived. And only then did I realize that um, Rev the Camellia really isn't golden, so I just could have bought the warm golden one. But okay, this is like a really long story. You probably don't care about any of this. Uh, you want me to put the highlighter on as soon as possible. We're almost there. I'm just going to put blush. So for blush, I'm going to do the Armani Luminous Silk in the shade 10, which is this beautiful peachy beige shade. Uh, because I think it, this is a very like neutral sort of shade that will also fit with the eye look because the eye look what I'm going for today is I want to say a little bit more on the cooler tone side uh, so I need to balance the cheek products really well because the highlighter from Chanel is not necessarily a cool tone shade so we need to do something that is a little bit more of an in-between and I think this shade is perfectly you know balancing between cool and warm tones at least on me so we're going to go for that Okay, and now it is finally the time for me to show you the oversized highlighter. They are not kidding when they say that they're oversized. This thing is like basically the size of my head, just a little bit smaller than that. But they are also freaking like stunning to look at because the embossing is just beautiful. So this is the shade, like I said, Precious Coral. Um, look at that beautiful embossing. It is not pristine because I've been using it pretty much consistently this past week. Uh, but it is this beautiful like coral, peachy coral apricot kind of shade. And it has the little like Chanel logo here in the very middle of the flower. And this is definitely a baked gelée formula. And I just wanted to, for comparison purposes, also show you the Rev de Camellia. Because the Rev de Camellia basically has the same embossing with a little Chanel logo on it. It is a lot smaller in size. Um, and this is how the shade of the Rev de Camellia highlighter looks like. So as you can see, this is actually not the golden champagne that I was expecting. Let me quickly swatch them for you so that you can get an idea how they're looking like. So here is Precious Coral and here is Rev de Camellia. And it is a highlighter, so I don't know that you're really going to see that much. And I don't think you're really going to be able to properly appreciate the undertone of Rev the Camellia unless I put it on my face, which is not going to be today. Although, in theory, it would actually fit the look a lot better. But uh, this is the shade of Precious Coral. On my skin, Precious Coral translates a bit like an apricot peach. And it definitely has a little bit of a cooler icy flip going on to it. Let me put it on my face so that you can see it. Highlighter is one of those things that you can swatch and swatch all you want, but in the end of the day you're really not going to see much unless you put it on your face. <clears throat> and then I'm going to uh, do just a little bit of comparison swatches. But first let me put on the highlighter. 
I'm going to take uh, the worker L from Sonia G and I'm just going to do a little swirly here around the camellia. I would rather not be swirling in the actual camellia, but you know, it needs to happen so that you can see how this translates on the skin. First of all, you can immediately appreciate that it really doesn't seem to be uh, too deep for my skin tone. Is it like the most appropriate shade for my skin? Probably not. Like I said, optimally, probably warm golden would have been the better shade for me, but this is still not too deep uh, on me. It does not translate to orange. It just has a little bit of like a peachy um, hint. Let me zoom you in a little bit so that you can see. On me, I can see a little bit of a peach hint, but honestly, if I turn my face and I don't know whether you will be able to see that there's a little bit of an, like an icy flip going on to this highlighter. It is really pretty. The formula is really lovely and really buildable. It is really elegant on the skin. It doesn't... <clears throat> It is really elegant on the skin, it doesn't really emphasize any texture. You can build it up if you want it to be more intense, but you can also definitely shear it down so that it's a very like light touch of highlighter on your face, uh, which is probably not something you can do with the lightest shade from this range, so take this with a grain of salt, because they are different textures. So the three highlighters from this range are not all the same texture. I think this one and the warm golden shade are the same, but pearly white has a significant amount of glitter to it and that might look a little bit different on the skin if your skin is a little bit more textured. But here you have Precious Coral. I always melt the powder products on my face with a little bit of Fix Plus and a sponge. Now I will give a fair warning though. If you are a lot lighter in tone than I am and a lot cooler in tone than I am, I don't know how Precious Coral is going to look on you. So if you are in that specific... <coughs> excuse me. So if you are someone who is the, in that specific category and you could comment uh, down below how this highlighter translates on you, that would be lovely. Because I've seen people complain that this is very orange. I don't find it too orange, but on my skin it really doesn't look orange. However, I'm sure that if you have a different skin tone, undertone and whatnot, it might translate different on you. So I'm very curious if you've purchased this specific shade and you are anywhere <laughs> different on the spectrum than I am, how does this shade translate on you? So I just wanted to compare really quickly the shade Precious Coral to um, the Divine Rose Highlighter from Pat McGrath because it's also what uh, Charlotte compared to. You might not be able to really detect the difference but on uh, my skin the two highlighters look rather different when I put them on my face because the Divine Rose Highlighter certainly has a somewhat cooler pink base to it and it comes across quite golden on the face, whereas the Chanel one is much more of a subtle peach with that slight icy sheen on it. So to me, they are actually not very similar to each other, not when you put them on the face. Like this on a swatch, maybe it's hard to tell that they are different, but I think on the face they translate quite differently. And the other comparison I wanted to make is between the Rav de Camellia and the Dior Couture Luminizer that I purchased recently in the shade uh, Nude Glow. I wanted to compare that to the Rev de Camellia because maybe on a swatch you will be able to see how much more pink toned the Rev de Camellia highlighter is. So this is Rev de Camellia and this is Nude Glow. Compared to the Rev de Camellia, it is actually much more warm and golden. I don't know whether you can see that. And now let's talk about what's probably the most exciting part of this video Aren't I the luckiest dog in the world? Look at this. So these are two items from the uh, Bobby Brown Holiday Collection that I would never have gotten my hands on here in the Netherlands because I don't think that this ever made an appearance or is ever going to make an appearance. And I've heard from other people in Europe that they've also not really seen this going around much. Maybe if you have a Sephora around you will be able to find it, but honestly I haven't seen it on Douglas, I haven't seen it on Look Fantastic, which are the only two places where I can shop Bobby Brown from. But this is the um, Lux and Eye Cheek Palette in the shade Moonstone Glow, which looks like this. It comes with six eyeshadows and a very huge highlighter. Two of the eyeshadows in here are matte and two are sparkly and glittery. And what's interesting about these is that they're all in the Lux eyeshadow formula from Bobby Brown 
which as you know I've been touting as the only dupe on the market for the Pat McGrath Blitz VR shades. And the other shade that I got is Cosmic, which is the gorgeous baked green shade. Look at that! I really wanted to have this shade, but I had sort of like uh, accepted that I'm never going to have it because I just well, was never going to see it anywhere. And here really comes the part of the story where I'm really, really lucky. So one of you wonderful, lovely people had ordered these products for yourself and then you receive extras of both of them. This lovely, wonderful person contacted me on Instagram and said, hey, I have extras of these and I know you're really interested in this formula and in specifically the green eyeshadow, shall I send it your way? Which was so incredibly generous because they sent it all the way from Canada to here, which must have been really expensive in terms of shipping and I am so freaking grateful that you thought of me and you uh, wanted to share this with me instead of someone who you probably didn't have to pay shipping for or you know was much more in your vicinity but I am super happy super grateful the amount of fairy godmothers that I have out there is increasing by the day and I don't know what I have done to deserve this because trust me I haven't done anything special to deserve this but I'm super happy and we're going to test uh, everything together now I will admit I've already worn the Moonstone Glow palette once uh, I haven't worn the green eyeshadow yet so let me first swatch everything so this is the shade cosmic and the shade cosmic is a um, sort of like sheer mint green I would describe this um, as something that is quite similar to the VR shades from Pat McGrath it is really pretty really ethereal and I feel like it has almost like a little bit of like a blue um, overlay going on to it I haven't worn this shade yet but like I said, I have already worn the uh, Moonstone Glow palette once. So let me swatch everything for you and then we can continue. I'm first going to swatch the two matte shades that are in here. So this one and this one. This one is a little bit more like a pinky terracotta tone. And the other one, this one here, is more like a nude brown. Let me give them a swatch. Although, I will tell you already now, you're probably not going to be able to see much on a swatch. But okay. Oh yeah. Oh, they're showing up on a swatch. Okay, so here they are. And then I'm going to swatch the sparkling shades, starting with the two neutrals over here. And then the two more colorful shades on this side. I don't really know the names of any of these, but... Um, okay, they're Moonstone and Lunar are the first two more neutral type shades. So this is Moonstone, this is Lunar, and then we've got Mystic and Starry Sky. So there is Mystic and there is Starry Sky. And the difference in formulas between the sparkly shades that are in here and the shade Cosmic to me is uh, Cosmic feels much more like a VR shade whereas all of these four shades feel more like her uh, astral shades. Alright, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is quite hard but I hope that you're catching a little bit of those sparkles. Now the next thing I want to say is um, to me the shade Moonstone here and I think I've heard this from people before is most likely the exact same shade as uh, Astral Solstice. So let me just quickly give uh, Astral Solstice a swatch. So this is Astral Solstice. And I'm going to swatch that right here in between the two so that we can see which one it is more similar to. It's like these two shades uh, married and had a baby and that was Astral Solstice. I think on the eye you're barely going to be able to tell the difference between all of these three if I'm being honest uh, and in terms of differences in texture they are really really similar like I really cannot detect a difference in the texture so to me these formulas are probably essentially made by the same lab the other thing I wanted to mention is that this purpley shade over here sort of reminds me of uh, Lavendering from the Risque Rose Squad. So let me quickly swatch that too. The other day I did a look where I layered the blue shade together with that purpley pink shade and I had the feeling that what came out 
look quite similar to lavendering so let me put lavendering right here in between it's not going to be exactly the same obviously also because the texture is quite different lavendering isn't the baked shade so you can see the base of lavendering is slightly different and a little bit deeper but i feel like the overlay that like pink sparkly overlay is quite similar between these two shades in particular so and i'm saying this specifically for the benefit of claudia because i know you were lusting after lavendering specifically and i believe you do have this palette the moonstone glow i don't think you need to be lusting after lavendering anymore because essentially they are quite similar to each other are they completely the same no but on the eye i feel like this shade really gives lavendering vibes so you should stop lasting after lavendering oh yeah and i forgot to swatch the uh, oversized highlighter which is in the shade moonstone glow which again is more like your classic neutral champagne i'm going to swatch that right here a very nice smooth texture i've already worn the highlighter once it is quite lovely it is, you know, your classic beautiful baked uh, formula. It is not sparkly, if that's something that you were concerned about. So. All right, I've zoomed you in a little bit and the idea for today's look is that I want to do something soft with the uh, shade Cosmic all over my lid because I'm actually quite curious how this translates on the lid. And I want to maybe do something toppery over it, but I'm not quite sure uh, exactly what yet. I will just see where the look takes me. And we're going to use um, this matte in my crease because I uh, prefer the undertone of this compared to this. Although, and this is, you know, where we come to some of the criticisms that I have for this palette. And I think you will see it in a second when I start using the palette. These two mattes have the sort of like uh, hard pressed clay texture that some of the eyeshadows from the Guerlain baked quads have but the shades in the baked Guerlain quads are quite deep in tone that is my first criticism of this palette there's really nothing in terms of like a deep matte shade that you can use here and the two lighter shades are so light that they barely show up on me and the difference in their undertone is minuscule so I'm going to uh, start using this shade. First of all, you need to absolutely be using um, natural hair bristles if you want to pick up anything from these two eyeshadows. They are quite clay-like, so they're difficult to pick up on a brush, which may be a good thing or a bad thing depending on uh, what you're going for. Because obviously, if you want to go for something extremely soft, then you will never be able to over-apply these eyeshadows. But you can see, I am a relatively like light skin tone. I am 2N or like 1N even when it comes to uh, my concealers. And this shade barely shows up on me. Barely shows up on me. It is never going to show up on anyone deeper than I am. Or if it does, you will have to probably use up half of the shade for it to make some sort of an impact on your eyelids. And the other shade in the palette that is a little bit more rosy toned doesn't really look all that different on the eye uh, it looks a little bit more ashen on me because it is uh it has a more cool undertone and because it is so sheer it mm, it's a little bit hard to work with so i find the two mattes in this palette a bit of a wasted uh, opportunity to make this a little bit more <clears throat> versatile both versatile and inclusive like Nobody of a deeper skin tone can use these two sh shadows. They are going to either not show up at all or they're going to look ashen on you. So that is quite unfortunate. And I understand that Bobbi Brown is probably targeted at rich white women, but even rich white women maybe want to like line their lashes or something. Give them something deeper because you can't do anything with these two shades if you want to create any sort of definition to your looks. Maybe this is meant for like really soft glam type looks, which still would be fine for me if she had provided something a little bit more mid-toned for the somewhat more uh, deeper skin tones out there. Because now I'm like, I want to show you how I'm digging my brush into this. And this is a natural uh, hair bristles. This is goat hair. I am really going at it to even get to the level of pigmentation that you're seeing on my eyes right now. And my other rather obvious um, criticism of this palette would be 
who needs a huge highlighter like this? Why not just like split it in two and have a blush and a highlighter or a bronzer and a highlighter instead of just having, you know, that huge humunculus highlighter that nobody's ever going to go through. Uh, <clears throat> what did just occur to me now though is that possibly these two shades can be used as like bronzery type shades or like contoury type shades, although given their size it would be rather difficult to get your brush in there. But in case you wanted to use this palette in a bit more of a versatile manner, you could probably try these as maybe even blush. I think the this shade could probably even use uh, be used and look lovely as a blush on someone of a very light skin tone. So this is um, my biggest criticism of this palette. Otherwise, the sparkly shades, obviously being the classic Astros from Pat McGrath, are absolutely lovely and I really enjoy them. FYI, I'm taking a little bit of glitter glue. Did I already say that? And I'm going to apply that all over my lid because I want to apply the shade Cosmic over top of a glitter glue to see how it looks like when it's uh, at its full impact. And I'm also going to shove that here into my inner corners because maybe I'm going to put... Nah, I don't think I'm going to put the glittery shades there. Let's just see where this goes. I'm not completely decided on where this look is going, but I'm now going to take the shade Cosmic and I'm just going to use my fingers because I also love touching these eyeshadows. They're just such beautiful textures and specifically the VR shades have always been my favorites. Oh, this is actually applying a little bit more punchy than I, than I was expecting. Ooh, 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 this is pretty and it's going to also make a beautiful like pop of green in your inner corners if you're doing neutral looks. This is lovely. And it is applying a little bit more, you know, opaque and pigmented than I was expecting based on the swatch. I will say though, these are preposterously expensive. Here in Europe, one of these will set you back 50 euros. So I would never tell you that you need to go out and buy this because it is ridiculously expensive. If you're able to find it secondhand or somewhere in, a, somewhere in an outlet store for at least half the price and you were and your heart was really set on owning this mint shade, then absolutely. But you know what? I'm, I want to quickly compare this. They're not going to be the same texture, but I want to compare to the mint shade in the Bridgerton palette. So the shade that I'm talking about is this one here because that is the only other like true mint that I have that I can compare for you from Pat. So this is um, Daring Dandy, I want to say, from the Bridgerton 2 palette. And this is Cosmic from uh, Bobbi Brown. This is a little bit warmer in tone. This has a bit more blue going through it. This also has a blue sheen, but it because it is a bit more sheer in nature and the green leans a bit more on the warmer side, you can see that the undertones of the two shadows are slightly different. But like the closest thing that you have in your collection, if you didn't want to be purchasing uh, this eyeshadow specifically for the formula, would be Daring Dandy from the uh, Bridgerton 2 palette. In my inner corners, I am just going to use actually the highlighter in the palette, the Moonstone Glow highlighter. And then I think I want to put something sparkly over top of the green, but I am doubting a little bit if I want to put something like Solstice. Well, I keep referring to past shades because they're my point of reference, but I, I doubt whether I want to put something a bit more champagne-y or maybe I want to experiment with that pink lavendering type shade. You know what? I think the pink creates a somewhat more interesting effect on the lid. So I am going to go for this shade as a topper, but let's see whether it can apply sheer enough as a topper over that pink, uh, that green, sorry. Oh yeah, I think so. It's not overtaking the um, cosmic shade completely, but I'm sure that it is adding a little bit of those pink sparkles that we will need to shine an artificial light on later in order for you to see. On my lower lash line, I'm just going to shove my brush in here and try to uh, line the lower lashes just very gently. I'm going to pop just something a little bit beige in my waterline here. This is one of my Kiko eyeshadow sticks.
And as expected, under artificial lighting, this is beautiful and very shiny and wet looking and sparkly and just absolutely magical. Oh, and I have a bit of a mascara smudge right here that I'm going to clean up in a second. This look just backed to be paired with Sorcery from Lisa Aldrich. You should expect to see this lipstick make an appearance quite a bit over the course of the next few months because this is the perfect fall and winter shade. Um, thoughts on everything that I showed you. I really enjoy the oversized highlighter from Chanel. It's a highlighter. It's not going to change your, you know, world. It's not going to um, make you dinner and take you for long romantic walks on the beach. It's just a highlighter. It is a beautiful baked gelée formula, so it does look glorious on the skin. But you, if you decide to purchase something so expensive and indulgent, it should really be not only from the for the product itself, like the the actual like highlighter type product, but also because you really like the packaging and you really like that beautiful embossing, and you think that the combination of all of these is what's really floating your boat. Now uh, the Bobbi Brown uh, items, the eyeshadow cheek palette, it is extremely entertaining to play with. I love the packaging. It is so festive and so beautiful. This has pros and cons. Like I said, the two mats in here, a bit of a wasted opportunity to make this palette a bit more inclusive and a little bit frustrating. This is too huge for a palette like this. I would have rather had a beautiful blush in that formula as well. Um, these two shades here, so similar you're never going to see the difference on your eyes. So really there is a 50-50% chance that you're really going to like this or really not. If you buy this to do extreme, if you have a very light skin tone and you purchase this to make very soft glam type looks, so something where you put this one or this one in your crease or on your lid and then you go with like a sheer amount of these toppery shades, um, where you can vary the tones a little bit more. You can go a little bit more smoky or you can remain very like daytime appropriate with these over here. Maybe you're really going to enjoy this, but you should not forget that there are cons to this palette too. Do not just buy it because it's the beautiful like Baked Blitz VR Astral Formula from Pat McGrath Labs. Consider the whole palette as one entity. Uh, and it is certainly not a perfect palette. It definitely has its drawbacks. The uh, shade in Cosmic wonderful if you have a soft spot for greens you're probably going to like it but again if you're based in europe i don't know that this is really worth 50 euros uh, only if you are very keen on this specific type of green and on the vr formula from pat mcgrath labs otherwise just go and search for similar mint greens in your collection overall i'm really happy with all the products and i really enjoy the look that i created with them um, and i'm very very excited to hear your thoughts i've really missed being over here i've really missed being in my normal routine we didn't really get to touch upon a little bit on the personal update but uh, it's been a very hectic time i haven't really slept in my bed for like almost weeks and honestly i'm pretty exhausted i need a holiday from my freaking holiday but anyway i'm really happy to be back to my normal routine i'm really happy that uh i am back on youtube to chat you guys up so i hope that you have uh you know thoughts and you know opinions to share with me or you just want to say hi because we haven't seen each other in two weeks thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye